Over 1.5 billion cubic meters of wood are used globally each year, emphasizing timber's essential role in construction and manufacturing industries. Rooted in ancient practices, timber has evolved significantly to integrate sustainable forestry methods. These modern practices ensure the continuous availability of wood while conserving biodiversity and minimizing environmental impacts. By managing forests sustainably, the timber industry supports long-term resource availability and ecological health. Given its extensive use and commitment to sustainable sourcing, one might wonder about the technical processes and types of machinery involved in transforming raw logs into finished timber products. So, how do they do it? The sourcing of raw materials for timber production begins in the forest, where specific types of trees are selected for their suitability in various applications. Commonly harvested trees include pine, known for its versatility and durability, fir preferred for its straight and uniform grain, and cedar valued for its natural resistance to decay and moisture. Each species offers unique characteristics that make it ideal for different uses in construction and manufacturing. The machinery used in the harvesting process is specialized to handle the demands of cutting and transporting these large trees efficiently and safely. A feller buncher is a key piece of equipment in this process. This powerful machine grasps a single tree at a time with its hydraulic arms and cuts it near the base using a mounted chainsaw mechanism. Additionally, some feller bunchers are equipped with features that allow them to remove branches and trim the trunk, preparing the tree for transport while still in the forest. Once felled, the trees are handled by skidders, which play a vital role in transporting logs. These robust machines are equipped with large grappling hooks or cables that drag the cut trees from the forest floor to a landing area. Skidders can typically transport several logs at once, depending on the size and weight of the trees, with some capable of hauling up to 15 tons per load. This method is effective for quickly clearing the harvested area and organizing the logs for further processing. At the landing site, forwarders complete the next step of the logistics chain. These machines pick up the logs and stack them neatly in their large beds, equipped with powerful cranes and grapples. Forwarders are designed to transport the logs from the landing area to the edge of the forest, where they are then loaded onto specialized logging trucks. These trucks are designed to handle the heavy and uneven load of timber logs. With robust frames and powerful engines, logging trucks can transport substantial weights, often carrying up to 30 tons of logs per trip. They take the logs to sawmills or processing facilities, ensuring that the wood arrives in optimal condition for the next stages of timber production. The first step at the processing facility is debarking, where the outer bark of the logs is removed. This is essential as bark can harbor pests, fungi, and other harmful agents that could compromise the quality and durability of the timber. Debarking machines, which include drum debarkers and ring debarkers, operate by using mechanical abrasion to strip away the bark. Drum debarkers tumble logs inside a large rotating drum, using friction and the log's own interactions to peel off the bark. Ring debarkers, on the other hand, use a series of knives arranged in a ring shape to cut the bark away as the log passes through the machine. This process not only prepares the wood for further processing, but also helps in improving the efficiency of subsequent operations like sawing and milling, as clean, debarked logs cause less wear on machinery. After debarking, the logs are moved to bucking machines, which are responsible for cutting the logs into specified lengths. This step is vital as it determines the sizes of the lumber that will be produced, tailored to specific market demands or product requirements. Bucking can be done using large mechanical saws that make precise cuts based on predetermined measurements, ensuring each segment of the log is optimized for further processing. The sustainability of modern timber processing is evident in the handling of byproducts like bark. Instead of discarding this material, it is often repurposed into useful products. Bark can be processed into mulch for use in gardening and landscaping, providing a natural, biodegradable ground cover that helps retain soil moisture and suppress weeds. Additionally, bark can be converted into biomass fuel, which is used in energy production. This not only helps in reducing waste, but also contributes to the production of renewable energy, aligning with the industry's commitment to environmental responsibility. At the processing facility, once the logs have been debarked and bucked, they move into the sawing and milling phase. Here, primary breakdown saws, such as band saws and circular saws, are employed to cut the logs into rough planks or beams. Band saws, with their continuous loop of metal blade, and circular saws, known for their rotating abrasive or toothed discs, handle the initial cuts. These saws are essential for their ability to process large volumes of wood quickly and efficiently, 
while maintaining precision in cutting to specified dimensions. Following the initial sawing, the rough cut timber progresses to the secondary milling stage. This involves multi-head resaws and edgers, which refine the rough planks and beams into specific dimensions and shapes. Multi-head resaws are equipped with several blades that make simultaneous cuts, optimizing the timber's dimensions for various uses. Edgers then trim the sides of these planks and beams, creating smooth, straight edges and bringing the wood to its final width and thickness. The precision of these machines is vital for producing consistently sized timber that meets industry standards and customer specifications. During these processes, sawmill dust and smaller wood pieces, often termed rejects, are generated. Instead of disposing of these byproducts, they are repurposed, reflecting the timber industry's commitment to sustainability. Sawmill dust can be utilized in the manufacture of wood pellets or as a raw material in the production of paper, while the smaller wood pieces are processed into wood chips, commonly used in particle board or as biomass fuel. This recycling of materials not only helps in reducing waste, but also contributes to a circular economy, where every part of the log is used effectively, minimizing environmental impact, and promoting sustainable production practices. After the sawing and milling processes, the timber undergoes a vital drying phase, which significantly reduces the moisture content of the wood. This step is essential as it prevents decay, enhances the wood's strength, and stabilizes the material to minimize warping and shrinkage. Proper drying is vital for ensuring the timber maintains its quality and durability over time, especially in structural applications. The primary method for drying timber is the use of kiln dryers, which are specialized chambers where temperature and humidity levels are carefully controlled to achieve uniform drying. Kiln drying accelerates the moisture removal process significantly compared to air drying, providing a quicker turnaround for large volumes of wood. In these kilns, the wood is stacked and then exposed to warm air that is gradually increased in temperature, allowing for the moisture within the wood to evaporate without causing the wood to split or crack. Kiln dryers come in various designs, including conventional kilns, where the air circulates naturally based on temperature gradients, and dehumidification kilns, which use fans to force air movement and heat pumps to condense moisture out of the air. The choice of kiln largely depends on the type of wood being dried, the specific moisture content goals, and the speed at which the wood needs to be prepared for market. This controlled environment allows for precise management of the drying process, ensuring that each piece of timber reaches the optimal moisture content required for its intended use. After drying, the timber moves on to the finishing phase, which is vital for enhancing both its appearance and functionality. The first step in this phase involves planing, where planing machines are used to smooth the surface of the timber. These machines typically feature sharp, precision blades that trim off any irregularities from the wood surface, rendering it smooth and uniform. This not only improves the aesthetic appeal of the timber, but also prepares it for any coatings or treatments that might be applied later. Following planing, the timber often undergoes various chemical treatment processes to boost its durability and resistance to environmental factors. One common treatment is the application of preservatives that protect the wood from pests, such as termites and fungal decay, and from weather elements that can lead to rotting and deterioration. This treatment is typically carried out using pressure treatment machinery, where the wood is placed in a large sealed tank. The preservative chemicals are then forced deep into the wood fibers under high pressure, ensuring thorough penetration and long-lasting protection. The machinery used in this treatment process is designed to handle large batches of timber efficiently, ensuring that each piece is uniformly treated. The result is timber that is not only more durable and resistant to external threats, but also has an extended lifespan making it more suitable for a wide range of construction and outdoor applications. This combination of mechanical finishing and chemical treatment ensures that the final timber products are of high quality, meeting industry standards for safety and durability.